Hi friends, this is Anna with Scrapping, Stamping, and Stuff. It is good to be back with you today. We are going to talk about 10 tips for tying the perfect bow today. How to tie a bow is one of the most common questions I get asked, and I was with a new stamper a couple of weeks ago trying to teach her how to tie a bow, and I, <laughs> I showed her how I do it. I said, well, you know, it's, it's like tying your shoes, and she informs me, this is nothing like tying your shoes. So, I had to pull out some of my tips and tricks for tying bows for beginners, and it got me thinking that I really needed to do a video on this. So, I am going to share more than 10 tips with you for how to tie a perfect bow, and I'm going to show you a few different methods for actually doing so that you may have never seen before. So, let's get started. My first tip for you is to choose the ribbon that you are using carefully. I have a few samples of our current Stampin' Up! ribbons right here. This is some glittered organdy ribbon, our crinkled seam binding. This is some of our new in color ribbon. This is a reversible ribbon. This one is a sheer ribbon. The type of ribbon you're using, especially if you're learning to tie bows, can make a big impact on how well it turns out. So there are benefits of different ones. Like this one is a little bit stiffer and easy to manipulate. I don't think there's wire in it, but it sort of feels like there is. So that one's kind of nice because it doesn't slide around on you a lot and it's easy to manipulate. This crinkled seam binding, I love this stuff because it's already messy looking and you don't feel, I don't feel the need to make a perfect bow with it because it already looks messy. This one, the new in color ribbons, these are really nice because they're very soft to work with. Now this right here, this reversible ribbon, that's a little trickier. It's a little stiffer and sl more slippery and it's double sided. So that makes it a little bit harder to work with. So play around with some different types and find one that works well for you. So let's say you have a hard to work with ribbon and you want to figure out how to make it tie a bow a little bit easier. Here is tip number two. Get a dryer sheet and your ribbon. This is some of our linen ribbon, I believe it's called. And just put that ribbon between the dryer sheet and pull it all along the length of it. I tried this for the first time the other day, and it is amazing how much softer it makes this hard and stiff ribbon after you do this a few times, and that is going to make it a lot easier to work with. Tip number three. Okay, I want you to close your eyes, do some deep breathing, in and out, and you may even need to call your best friends for, for support to get ready to tie these bows. Just kidding. Just kidding. We're going to make it easy with the things I'm going to show you here. So let's get started. Here is method number one, and this is the method that I normally use to tie a bow. I do not normally use the special tricks that I'm going to show you in a minute, but I want, I want to show you this just kind of as a baseline to get started. So I am right-handed. That is going to affect this. If you're left-handed, you'll need to switch all of this, I would imagine. So I make a loop in my right hand, got a tail hanging down here, and actually I want to make sure I have plenty to work with, so I'm going to leave a smaller tail. And I should mention, I meant to mention this one moment ago, how much ribbon do you want to start with? So if you are making a really small bow, I would suggest starting, this is going to give you quite a bit of extra, but for what I'm going to show you, it's how much you would need to do it easily, about 10 inches. For a larger one, about 12 inches. And for if you have large ribbon like this and want a larger bow, about 16 inches, give or take. Now, with most of those, you're going to have extra that you can cut off at the end. All right. Method number one, make a loop in your right hand with a small tail sticking down. You are going to wrap this over and around the right side and underneath. And now through this loop we've created right there by my thumbnail, we need to stick the ribbon through 
and pull it upwards. That is how I remember to do this. When I am pulling my second loop through, I always have to be pulling it upwards to get it to look nice, okay? This is kind of an extra tip, but if you don't like the way your bow looks, do some fidgeting with it, okay? You can make a pretty rough bow look really nice if you do some fidgeting with it. Trim your ends off, and we have a very nice bow. Okay, so that is my normal way. Now we are going to go on to another method that I've been playing around with. This is the one that when I was working with that beginning stamper a couple of weeks ago, I pulled out this trick and she nailed it on the first try. She was using some twine, which is a little bit different than using ribbon, but she nailed it the first time. So this method, you want to make two loops as seen here, one in your right hand, one in your left hand. You need them to be fairly large and fairly far apart. If you try and do this like this, you with just a little bit, you are going to struggle. So you need a big loop over here, big loop over here, fairly far apart. You are going to knot these together. So lay one side over the other one and knot it through as so. Now, it is going to look weird and not good, and that is okay, that is normal. Let the ends flip down to where they look natural. I'm gonna pull the ends a little bit in, and tighten that up, and look how nice that looks. A perfect bow, I love that. That is probably my favorite trick. So we'll add that one to the collection over here. I have to show you this. So I, when I was testing these out yesterday, I tested it out on my husband. I was like, hey, I need you to try this out and see if you can do this. And he was not impressed. He was not interested. And I, I so I got him to do it. This was his first one using that trick. I didn't fluff it at all. But look, my husband, okay, he like drives tractors and fixes semis and is not interested in crafty things. He nailed that on the first try. So that is a good one to try. Now this next one is a lot of fun. If you've never seen this before, you will be amazed. I'm sure some of you have seen this before. The fork trick. So this is officially tip number five, but I'm gonna show you three different ways to do the same idea right here. So with the fork, you are going to leave a loop sticking out to the left side, or a, a little tail. Lay it across the front, wrap it around the back. At this point, I like to leave it laying over my thumb if possible. It's going to make it easier in just a moment. You are going to stick the tail through the center of the fork from front to back there. You are going to pull it around back and up through the center of the fork again. At this point, I like to kind of slide it down to the bottom to make sure none of this pops off the top. Here is the part that is a little bit hard for me to show. I need to loop this through. See the loop on top of my thumb? I have to loop this through from left to right. So I'm gonna lay it over the top of that loop and trying to do this so that you can see, which is going to be difficult. But I am looping this through the loop on my thumb from left to right. So it's coming out in the front, going under that loop and coming out in the back. Now I can let that loop go off of my thumb. I am going to pull only with the piece in my right hand Tighten everything up, slide this off, and look at that adorable bow. We'll trim the ends off. This is the one where you end up with a lot of extra ribbon at the ends, but you really need it to work with during the process. Look how cute that bow is. I don't know if I said this, but when you're doing this, the back side is what is going to end up being your front side. Is that not amazing? I had heard about this trick quite a while ago, and I 
wanted to know, you know, how can I do that? It makes such an adorable little bow. How do I make a nice bigger bow? What do I have around the house that I could use for that? And I thought about a comb. So I pulled out this comb and you can do the exact same thing with it, but you can make your loops as big as you want to on this. Now I'm going to show you with a large and much harder to work with ribbon. So hopefully this works out how to use this comb. So you can, you, you imagine you're wrapping around the front of the fork, around the back of the fork, choose your appropriate width. We'll go with right there, I think. Now, keep that over my thumb. Wherever the center point in this would be, I want to fish it through from front to back. I am estimating, so if my loops end up uneven, it is because I did not count to make sure I'm in the center. Okay, so I've gone through the center from front to back. Now, slide it all down. I want to come back through that same piece at the top. Here's that little bit tricky part where we need to go under that loop that is on my thumb. And I'm running out of ribbon a little bit okay got it now i pull just on this one i didn't mention this on the last one with the fork but what i like to do when i'm tightening them up i like to pull the tails down at the natural angle where they're going to lay to tighten everything up and this one is very difficult to tighten because it is so large and hard to work with all right, I think we're good, hopefully. Pull this off, flip it over. Look at that bow, is that not a cool trick? I just love that, I love the fork, but you don't always want teeny tiny bows. So with a comb, you can get any size you want. Now, there are tools out there for this to make it easier. I had a good friend years ago who has a very handy husband who made this for me. It's just a block of wood with a couple of dowel rod pieces and holes drilled at equal, it starts in the center and then going out, they're at equal spacings away from that center point. So if I want a small bow, well now this one's stuck because we're on camera. If I want a very, very small bow, kind of like that fork, I can put these towards the center if I want a very large bow, I can move them out towards the end. So if you are handy with woodworking or you know somebody who is, these are really cool tools that can help with the same thing like I just showed you with the comb. Okay, now, now that I've showed you all that, I do want to show you there is a way to do this exact same thing with absolutely no tools at all. No fork, no comb, no little wood block tool, and it is with your fingers. So this is the exact same method I just showed you with your fingers. So imagine that your index finger and your middle finger are the fork. You're gonna leave the tail out to the left, wrap the ribbon all the way around until you come back to the front, leave it over your thumb if you can. You don't have to leave it over your thumb, but I just tried to come up with a way that's a little bit easier to get this tail through. So I went down through the bottom, up and around and back through. Now I have to go through this loop on my thumb from left to right. And once again, I'm trying to do this so you can see and it just is very difficult to do it so that you can see. So, okay, I went up, over, under and I'm coming back out to the right side and Sometimes you can get, oh, I see one right now. You can get twists in your ribbon that will affect how this comes out. If you see a twist in your ribbon before you tighten it up and you're able to fix it, I highly suggest that, okay? Tighten that up. I'm only pulling on this right side. Slide it off of my fingers. And looks like I did get one other little twist in there. But let's do some fidgeting. 
kind of try and turn these around and that is definitely still a nice bow okay if they don't look perfect when you first make them poke push it down on your work surface and imagine what it's going to look like when you attach it to your project and it really helps it helps everything kind of lay flat and look nice all right that was the trick with the fingers so those are my methods for tying bows i hope that one of those will work really well for you now i want to show you a couple more trips trips tricks for attaching them to your projects so let's say you want a piece of ribbon with a bow on top of it on your project a really nice way to do this is to wrap your ribbon around just take a piece of ribbon that is slightly wider than your project wrap it around and just attach the little end pieces right here on the back once you have that done I'm looking for the matching ribbon that appears to be hiding just attach your little bow right on top of that okay it gives the illusion that you have tied this all the way around and made your bow but it gives you the benefit of being able to make your bow first and then just add this piece later which is much simpler Okay, so let's say you actually do want to tie your ribbon all the way around your project for whatever reason. Sometimes with a card, here I'll pull the sample out right here. Sometimes with a card, you do, you want it to go around this whole top flap. So you can do the illusion trick like I showed you and wrap the ends around the back. But if the whole thing is going to show, you can do that same thing with a piece and wrap it around the front attach it together right under where you are going to tie this as a little teeny one but then you can at attach your little bow on top so you can do it that way now let's say you're just not interested in that and you really do want to tie your ribbon around your project let's look at some tips for this So you lay your ribbon under your project. I always, how do I loop this? I loop. Now I'm going to forget. I guess my left is over the right. I'm going to loop that around. At this point, see these twists? You want to get those out of there. So I twist the ribbon in my hand until that all looks straight so at this point i like to pull the ends straight up and down because it helps hold all of this together the trick and the hardest part about doing this is getting this to hold tight while you are tying your bows so i would encourage you to find some kind of tool that can help do that for you you can use a paper clip, you can use a little clothespin. If you have reverse tweezers, they are absolutely perfect for this job. Now, the way I'm tying this bow right here, you need to go back to trick number one and follow those same instructions. I've got the loop in my right hand. I'm going up and over. Now where my index finger is, I have to stick the loop through and pull. And at this point, the tricky part with this clothespin is getting it out of the way because it's kind of big and bulky. The paper clip can work a little bit better because it's smaller. Do a little bit of fidgeting, pull it tight. There is a nice bow. Okay, let's say you want this look, but you want it to be a little bit easier. If you notice when I was tying on that, the cardstock was bending. If this was already attached to my card, that would make a difference, but you have to factor in how to get the ribbon under before you attach this down. So if you want the same look, but you want to do it a little bit easier, grab yourself one of your stamping blocks, 
you will have to choose the size of your block appropriately for how wide the piece of your card is that you want to wrap this around. But with this, you could pull as tight as you want, and that paper is not going to bend. It's not going to damage anything. This time I'll use this little paper clip. Loop in the right hand, up and over. Push that through. And there we have a nice bow. I should adjust that down, make it a little smaller. But what you can do with this is cut the back side. Now we have lots of ends hanging out. I should have trimmed off my little tails a little bit better. We'll do that to make it easier to see what's happening here. And now I can use the big piece that was wrapped around. I can wrap that around a piece of my card, attach those ends to the back, and it looks like I tied it originally around the entire card. One more very quick trick. If you are tying twine or very small ribbon all the way around something before you make a bow out of it, I'm going to do the same thing right here. This could be around your card, of course. So I wrapped it once. I'm pulling it tight. Now, if I'm using ribbon, I usually don't want to make a full knot because it would be very big and bulky here. But when I'm using really small ribbon or twine, I absolutely make a full knot just to hold everything in place while I can tie my bow. Okay. Let's talk about one-sided ribbon. Okay, I believe we have arrived at tip number nine. One-sided ribbon. This looks similar, but I think you should be able to see the difference. On the one side, it's more of a bright green shimmery. The other side, this is our peacock color. So I'm going to show you this on with the finger trick, but you can apply this to the other methods as well with the fork and the other tool. So whichever side you want to be out, you need to start so that you that's what you can see right here. Okay, I'm going to do this entire trick, go down through the bottom, come back up and over, go through that loop by my thumb, and somewhere I got a twist in that. Can you see that right there? So I did not do that on purpose, but it makes for a good teaching trick. I'm going to have to get that flipped over. Okay, I think I got it most of the way flipped. I'm going to have to get that fixed before I tighten it, or I can just start over. You can always start over. I think a little bit of it is still showing that way, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it for now. So if you like the, when you get your bows done and you like the way they look with this side that you can see right now is the top side, you want the right side of the ribbon to be up like it is right now. If, like I showed you, usually the top of your ribbon is going to be the back side over here. So if that is the case, you need to twist these little end flaps over so that the back side is what you're seeing. Get everything tightened up, situated. And this is one of those ribbons that was a little bit harder to work with, so we'll see how this turns out. But I flip it over and look at that. Once I attach that down, these the, the right sides are gonna show on those flaps. Very nice, okay? so. That is when you have ribbon that's different on each side. It's not really a great one to start with as a beginner, but that is a tip to help you if you struggle with that sometimes. Okay, tip number 10. We have almost arrived. Hopefully you have learned something here that is going to make your bow tying experience better. Tip number 10 is if all else fails, don't tie a bow 
tie a knot. So I'm going to show you. Imagine this is your card. It doesn't matter which way you start here, but you're going to do opposite ways as I'm going to show you here. So let's say this time I'm going to lay right over left. Tuck that around, pull it tight. Now this time I need to lay the opposite way. So left over right. As I pull this tight, I want to keep my ends. You can hold them wherever you want them. So if you want them this way or this way, you can do that. A lot of times I like mine to be nice and straight. Pull it tight, trim your ends off. You have a really nice knot that lays flat. Okay, so I know I really believe that with these tricks you can tie a bow. But if you're in a hurry, you just don't want to deal with it one day, that is how to make a really nice looking knot. I'm going to leave you with two small tips before we go. One, if you are working with ribbon, you must have good scissors. These are Stampin' Up's paper snips and they are awesome. They are fantastic. I actually got a new pair out this morning to demonstrate with this video because I've been struggling with the pairs I had lying around that my children have gotten into. I'm going to have to mark this pair off limits for anyone to touch besides me because we need to keep them nice and sharp. But these scissors are fantastic for fussy cutting paper, for ribbon, for all sorts of paper crafting purposes. And my very last tool is how do you attach these to your projects? If you have been doing it with glue, I really suggest that you get some glue dots. And where are my glue dots? Okay, I had to roll, unroll a bunch to find any. So I don't know if you could see there, I think you can see. So these are pre-dried sticky glue on rolls. So when I attach a bow to my project, I, you do not have to pull these off with your fingers. That's the way I used to do it before I got smart. Uh, all you do is press this to that glue dot. It's gonna pick it up on the back of your bow. You can stick it right down to your project. So thank you for joining in. If you would like more ideas and inspiration, please visit my website, scrappingstampingandstuff.com. Please order your su supplies from my online store, and I hope to see you again next time.